Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Invin and today I'm going to be bringing you guys some tips that are going to improve your quality of life in New World. And these are going to be some sneaky little tips that are not immediately obvious. So hopefully these will help you improve your gameplay, improve your kind of traversing skills. And that is going to be one of the first things to cover here. So as you guys can see, it's kind of when you get to a mountain like this, kind of struggling to jump up. If you actually hold block when you jump, you can actually jump up, hold block. And jump and block and jump and block and up you go. And this works on a multitude of different things. Obviously not a straight up jump like this. Uh, where you can kind of just get up by kind of being in the right position. But if there is kind of a ridge line uh, that's kind of, you know, not easy to get up necessarily. So like this one right here, it wouldn't work. You've got to jump up here. Uh, again, when they've got just jump up ledges, it doesn't really work. But something where there is kind of a curve in the rock or almost a slope type of thing, which looks like you maybe shouldn't be able to climb it, but then you kind of can. If you actually jump and block at the same time, you'll be able to get up some of these areas. So this works in many different areas throughout the game. And if you just keep going, you will eventually be able to get up some of these areas. This one here is, is pretty tricky. Uh, there's nothing really at the top of it. So it's kind of not the best example. Um, but I think we should be able to just get up to the top of this one anyway just to kind of prove a point here and now we're on that ledge which is kind of an unclimbable area so yeah block and jump and just hold block the whole time and keep jumping you can do both and it will put you back and just kind of jolt you up the mountains now i'm going to run back into town to show you guys another thing here but whilst i'm on this topic it is going to be making sure that you hit your daily resets on the elite chest this is going to be something that i see a lot of people not doing and at the very least you want to run around a different zone every day if you only have time to do one or two zones a day make sure they are different ones or indeed if you have time to do them all each day you have a personal 24 hour timer from when you open an elite chest which will then reset the next day at the same time so try and make sure that you're running all of these each day or just one of these each day whichever is your favorite if you've got time for one or indeed like alternate a few so maybe you'll go to shattered mountains one day then you'll maybe go to reek water the next day and kind of like change it up like that as well now, when you are in town and you've got kind of a lot of stuff in your inventory, let's say you're over encumbered by quite a lot, you can actually go ahead and take these potions here. Now, as you guys will see, this is the tier 5 infused encumbrance potion, and these ones increase the encumbrance limit by an exceptional amount for a short time. So if I go ahead and use this one here, you'll see it gives me 100 extra points to my encumbrance. Now, these are actually pretty accessible. Um, you can craft them, of course, yourselves. But if you do just search these potions on the auction house, the tier 3 ones, which I think is 25, I believe, or 30. These are 0.01 on my server, so very, very accessible. The tier 4 ones are actually the most expensive ones right now at 5 or 15 per one and this is obviously just in everfall and then to finally round this off the tier fives are actually cheaper than those again they're not 0.88 or one each so you can easily get the tier five encumbrance potions here this will help you if you are trying to move stuff around if you might maybe running back from a place maybe pop a couple of these on your hot bar if you are going to try fill right up maybe you're doing a big mining trip you've got all your gear sets on and that's something that you want to do take a couple of these with you so you can get back to town with actual still full running speed rather than kind of walking back because that's not great also really good if you're moving from one crafting station to another and when you refine stuff you go over the limit or whatever the case may be or once you craft some stuff you go over the limit that's a really good thing to have in your back belt so that you can then just pop one of those and continue to move around freely now another really really important thing here is the asmodium ingots now as you guys will see these do require 200 smelting to craft so i am 19 levels off this right now but just to show you guys once you do get to 200 smelting or one of your crafters in your company does get to that level you will make need to make sure that they are crafting these daily so you are limited to 10 bars per day of asmodium and these are used in the crafting of some high level armors now you will need five orichalcum ingots for these you will need a tolvium you will need a cinnabar you'll need an obsidian flux and you'll need two charcoal and that is per bar so essentially you'll need 10 times each of those materials per day to maximize these now the reason that you do want to have those as modium is of course when you do craft things with the void bent ingots that these are going to be the crafting material you can use with it to increase this as well as with weapons and armor throughout the game which is going to be very very good now void bent ingots could be one of the most important things right now the armor the void armor is probably the best thing you can craft in new world right now it can be a 600 gear score armor roll and obviously if you have enough materials you can re-roll these or dish these out to whichever stat boost you get or kind of skill point you get on the armor piece to the relevant players but these cost an absolute ton so they do need 10 energy cores which is going to be a stupid amount of moats and this is per bar 
you then need also a Void Essence and Void Ore. Now, each of these are rare or even legendary drops, I should say, from Oracalcum Ore. So you will need 175 mining in order to get these drops or indeed buying them off the auction house. But currently right now for me, the Void Ores are going for about seven to 8,000 per and the Void Essences are about three to 4,000 per. So it's expensive per bar. It's like 12K just off that. Now, the energy cores you can actually make at the stone cutting table. So if we just zoom over here really quickly, I'll show you guys where these ones are. And they're right down on the stone cutting just underneath all of the gem stuff if you have a look here you'll see energy core and you need an elemental and an eternal heart now the eternal heart is 50 water motes 50 earth motes 50 fire motes and 50 air motes and the eternal heart is 50 death 50 life and 50 souls so essentially you will need 50 of every single type of moat in the game all together to make one of each then you combine that into an energy core and you need to do that 10 times so essentially you're going to need 500 of each moat in the game for one void bent bar which is an absolutely crazy amount so if anybody is kind of upgrading those moats hold off on that make sure you're getting these over to your designated crafters one thing to mention is these energy cores are actually bound on pickups so as soon as you do craft these they are bound to the player so make sure you are doing this with the crafter who is going to be able to then make the void ingots and of course then craft the armor or weapons that you desire to be void because that is going to be bound to you so definitely make sure you're doing that but get on these as early doors as you can as it's going to be a big 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 grind to get on that very very soon now another really really important thing particularly on kind of the same leaf as that is actually making sure that you are using the mining gear now as you can see i've kind of got this skeletal uh kind of knight armor on right now really cool the halloween skin but on here you can see i've got the miner's hat which gives me plus 4.3 percent the miner's shirt for plus 4.3 percent 3.8 on the gloves 4.5 on the legs uh, another 4.1 on the shoes and then of course you can use the foods as well which we'll get into in just a moment now obviously the tier 5 stuff is better but it can be quite expensive or rare drops whichever kind of route you want to go down uh, for me the best option was to buy the tier 4 stuff and I already had the tier 5 pants so I kept those ready and kind of had one of these I think the gloves as well and bought the other three this is really really good for gems but obviously as well for the rare drops like the fair iron and of course the void stuff when you are going on the Oracalcum grinds, you are certainly going to want to have these. And if you can, moving on to the buff foods, that's going to be another really important thing. Make sure you make use of the buff foods. Like here, you can see we've got herb roasted potatoes, which increases mining luck by 1,400 points for 25 minutes. And you've also got roasted potatoes, which are a little bit more accessible to pretty much everyone. And those are by 1,000 points of mining luck for 20 minutes. So obviously, the herb roasted ones are better. And there is a tier 5 variant of these as well, which I haven't got my hands on yet. But these are also really, really good for mining luck. And and this can be done for skinning look, logging look, any other type of thing in the game that you want to do in terms of gathering skills. You can get this stat boosting food to kind of boost that. Also as well, don't forget that you've got constitution, strength, intelligence, focus and dexterity boosting foods as well or combinations of two kind of usually constitution and focus or focus dexterity whatever you want there is foods to boost each of those stats as well so make sure you're making use of those particularly if you've got some challenging quests some challenging activities you want to do like maybe you're doing the end game dungeons or indeed for pvp speaking about gems as well there then mining gold silver and platinum have the best chance at giving you a gem so when you are using those mining look sets and boosted mining look foods Make sure you're going for those if you are trying to get gems because you're going to have a much higher chance. Platinum drops at a minimum tier 4 gems, so that's going to get you the biggest chance of those tier 4 and 5, those brilliant and pristine gems. Now, moving on to the auction house here then, or the marketplace, when you put something up for sale, let's say these items here, and maybe let's say that I wanted to sell Azoth water, you can see here that I can sell these to these people for their sell orders right now, so 2 gold per, or I can see what the current sell orders are. Now, in Windswood for me, it's 230 plus, and if I put all three up here, you'll see that the listing fee is 387 gold now if you know it's something that's going to sell like azoth water is needed for a lot of high-end infused potions these are going to sell pretty quickly particularly if i undercut by a pence so i do that to 229 uh, up rather than 230 i can put this down to three days as that's going to sell and that takes the listing down by two gold pieces only to 107 i could even take this down to maybe one day 24 hours if i knew it was going to sell and that even reduces it further so again if i go in there then and just know that i'm going to undercut that by a 0.01 gold which is basically nothing but it'll still be at the top of the list place that order it's only going to cost me 57 listing fee and i'm actually going to make a bigger profit off doing stuff so anytime you're selling something you know is going to sell within the first day or three days make sure you do choose those time frames because you are going to save a lot of money and increase your margins of profit massively on the same vein as that then any stat boost in food so let's say for example we go down here and we can have a look at trade skill bonus foods 
These ones will show you what's kind of the most expensive, which ones do what, and you can kind of see here that some of them are pretty cheap, but some of them, if we go across a few pages, um, let's have a look what we can see here, maybe the herb roasted potatoes, right? These ones are going to be 150 each, and if you know where to get the herbs and stuff from, this is pretty easy to do. Quite a nice bit of money, and some of these are a lot more expensive. You can see boiled potatoes right here, 20 gold. Uh, you've got things on the next page, cabbage, salted poultry with cabbage, 33.99. So these do take a lot more kind of stuff to craft them, but once you do actually get on top of it, you can make a lot of money. But if you are wanting to make a ton of money very easily, things like gathering herbs, so the hyssop, and selling the materials so peppercorn is pretty cheap but there is other things maybe like ginger which will sell for a little bit more you've got up to 73 there on that one if we have a look at something a little bit less popular like nutmeg for example you can see that these are up to 4.38 as a minimum here in Windswood each and if we go to kind of like the whole settlement and have a look what the cheapest is that's the cheapest out of anywhere if I took these up to Brightwood we're nearly at five if I take them over to Monarch's Bluff from 529 uh, first light we're on 595 etc 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 750 and Everfall so these are going to make you a lot of money now there's a fantastic video by a creator named Appy. I'm going to link this down below for you guys because this is all his work. He's actually done a herb locations where you can find stuff. So I will link that video in the description below. If you do go over and kind of watch that video, make sure to drop some love in the comments for this guy. He's done a really good work on finding out where these herbs can actually be gathered from. And um, so if you do want to find that out, go ahead and watch that video. You can make some really, really good money off selling these as well. And it's a really underrated way to make money as well as getting your harvesting gathering skill up as well. And if you do go in a look set, obviously you get more chance to get these drops. So you're going to do really, really really well off of that one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed these quick tips and tricks how to improve your quality of life here in New World and there's some nifty little things I've learned as I've been going around the game trying to make money and sustain myself and also when I've been spending a lot of money kind of things I've been spending a lot of money on also kind of tips and tricks of how to traverse easier little things you can do that do improve your overall quality of life in New World. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed if you have please do be sure to leave a like on today's video down below. If you are new here to the channel and you'd like to see more New World content and please do make sure you go down below and press the big red subscribe subscribe button with the notification bell on as I do upload every single day so it'd be great to have some of you guys here for that one other than that guys as always thank you very much for watching take care and peace